In this video, traders, we're going to look at stopping the bad habits that will kill your trading. Hey, traders, warm welcome to you. Okay, so you know psychology is one of the most, if not the most important thing in trading, right? If you've come to this channel, you've watched this video, you are seeking some help with trying to eliminate some of your bad habits. The title's caught your eye and you thought, you know what, I am interested in this. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna talk about some of the bad habits that will kill your trading, some of the textbook ways that people say to get over it, and some of the ideas that I've got and I know I've used and know others have used to successfully get over these hurdles. So let's look at some of these things, right? Imagine you're in a market condition, uh, you're in a market, uh, whatever condition it may be, and you are making decisions on the fly. You are saying to yourself, ah, I thought this would break through resistance. I thought this would break out. I thought the resistance would hold. I decided to exit my position because it didn't look right. I didn't think the market would go higher. I did think the market would go higher, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna go through all of these things. Now, can you see the common theme throughout all of this? This is basically using a discretionary element to your trading. And now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be using a discretionary element. I think that's one of the most powerful things in trading. However, if you consider that you are standing right here and you are consider and consider that this is where you want to get to, a level of consistency, a decent profitability, or just stop the rot of losing so much money. And to get to that level there, you've got to overcome multiple hurdles, right? You've got several things that you need to overcome to get to that point. And there's you there, and you're not a very happy guy or girl because it seems like it's such a, a long way to go. Sometimes you've got to go backwards to go forwards. So when you have these discretionary elements like, oh, I jump in too early, I hesitate, I get the urge, I couldn't do it, I did do it, I decide, I thought, these are all things that you can eliminate from your trading straight away. You can add an automated element in it. I'm not saying go out and back test and use an automated robot or black box. What I'm saying is remove the discretionary element of trading for now. So as many of you say, hey, you know what, I don't wanna do that, but you can add that back in later. Let me explain what I mean. So let's say you're in a trade or you're about to pull the trigger and you have a discretionary element of like, hey, I wanna buy at support. And so you come, the price comes to support and you say, I, I didn't think it would hold and you don't buy and it bounces off it or, or whatever. You add the discretion and the problem you have with the discretionary element is that you can never be right, you can never be wrong. Let me explain what I mean. I mean that you might be right and it works sometimes, but you can't really quantify discretion. Discretion needs to come in when you have that subconscious that you can trust and you don't mind if it's wrong because you trust it over the long term. When you're in the beginning of, of trading or intermediate or a level where you're trying to get to this kind of level, you don't trust a lot of things in the market. You don't trust your strategy that much and you definitely don't trust your own judgment because why would you? you've been losing or not performing as you've wanted up to that point. So there's no reason for you to trust your own judgment. So my suggestion is this, remove as much of the judgment as you can from your trading. Make your setup clinical and simple. So for the example of the buy at support level, let's say you wanna buy at support, it's a trade, whatever the filter is, you've got a couple of filters beforehand. Again, binary events. If the stochastic is this, if the moving average is this, if the trending condition is that, whatever they are, a couple of those, there's your filters, now you have a trigger. Now this is the time you say, okay, this is my support, I'm gonna call it S1, may not be in relation to pivot points, but just call it a major support level. You've defined it pre-market as a major support level. You've also defined pre-market that you will go long at a major support level if you have the checklist, your three-stage checklist, tick, 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 or whatever the filters may be. And now this is where you take away the discretionary element because at the moment you're saying, I'm gonna go long there and you, oh, and you allow yourself to perhaps succumb to these things. I thought it wouldn't hold, so you didn't take it. I didn't take it because you get the point. But if you say to yourself, right, I need this binary event to occur and then I'll pull the trigger. So let's say, for example, the market breaks through the support by less than 20 pips, call it. I'm just off the top of my head, right? So less than 20 pips, 
Okay, I will then go long as we come back up through the support. That's a binary event. Either it does happen or it doesn't. If it goes 10 pips and goes back up, it doesn't work. If it goes 50 pips, comes back up, doesn't work. It doesn't break through, doesn't come back up. You get the point. It has to do this. Now, I'm making this up just off the top of my head. This might not be. It might be if it comes within a range of plus or minus 10 pips, I will go long at that point. Wherever, I, wherever it hits it, I will go along within 10 pips. You get the idea. So the point is you're taking away this kind of decision-making process on the fly. You're taking away the discretionary element of it. So what this does is it allows you to not only test the quality of your setups and your strategies, but it allows you to remove these bad habits because rather than second, second guessing everything and allowing yourself to be the last line of decision-making, which by the way, when you get to here, you will probably want to do. You'll probably want to add the discretionary element, or perhaps you won't. Perhaps you're making so much with this, you say, you know what, I don't need to meddle with the thing. But the point is, at this early stage, when you're trying to get past these hurdles, eliminate any kind of ambiguity to the system or strategy. Decide that you want to do that. Now, I don't necessarily mean decide that way before. You could decide that pre-market. You could decide that um, as it's coming down to it 15 minutes before, for example. Perhaps it's a little bit early, but you get the point. The idea is you pre-make pre the decision and say, I am going to buy at S1 if we do this, if these filters are in place, that's it. The decision is made for you. Then you don't have to do anything about thinking on the fly about is it, is it strong, is it weak, reading price action. Add that element in later because all that does is add confusion in the early days. You're second guessing it, sometimes you're taking it, sometimes you're not. And all you're doing is negating any data that you're getting from your setup or strategy because you don't know whether you're taking them all the time or not. You're kind of, you're just guessing at it, saying, oh, I don't think it's good. And that, you're gonna be influenced by things that are probably not important because you not that you haven't got the experience yet to kind of take all the data in and feel comfortable with that decision. So in summary, guys, I've covered a kind of lot in this video, but in summary, try and remove any discretionary elements you're trading if you find that you are saying this too much, i.e., you know, I jumped in, uh, I jump in or I hesitate or any of these things, I get the urge, any of these discretionary phrases Eliminate them by going purely systematic for now. Add it in later, but just so you can see and prove to yourself that the setup and strategy is working. But the only thing is, the thing is then is you've got the data, you can go back and say, hey, actually, you know what? That setup and strategy doesn't work so well in these conditions, so I can add this element, that element in. And it just relieves you of pressure because you know what you've got to do. The pressure comes with setting the strategy and the setup in the first place, then the pressure's off. All you've got to do is execute the thing and execute it correctly. And like I say, you don't have to plan it pre the whole day. You can give yourself up, say up to 30 minutes or something, whatever it may be. You can still have some element of adjustment, but once you've decided to do it, then there's no on the fly decision-making in this area. And that's the key to it. All right, guys. Stopping the bad habits that will kill your trading. Try that out. Let me know how you get on. If you like this kind of stuff, thumbs up. And by the way, if you're a subscriber, appreciate your support. If you're not, maybe consider doing so for more videos like this on the channel. Take care, guys. See you next one. Goodbye.